Yo, what's going on, Senpai Squad? Welcome back to a brand new video. And today we got the in depth analysis and chapter review of Boruto chapter 26. Now, before I jump into this, I need to give a huge shout out to different on Twitter. The links to her account will be in the description below. She's the one who made all these incredible images that you see in the thumbnail of this video. So if you want to see some incredible colorings of the Boruto manga once it's released, then go and check her out. She does Boruto news, Boruto. She's a fantastic person, a great friend of mine, and her colorings are phenomenal. Secondly, if you didn't see my live reaction to this chapter, then it will be at the end card of this video. If you did miss it, it's something you feel like checking out. But what this video is, is to kind of give you an idea of where I am at this chapter now that I've had a few more days, a few extra times to read it and plan out some notes. So then, straight away, I want to kind of split this chapter into, I think, about four main categories I'm going to cover. And the first one is, is Jigen himself. Self. So basically the chapter opens up with the Kara or one of Kara's hideouts, blah blah. We see Jigen with the young Quacky. Presumably this isn't too far after hey, uh, Jigen's initially kind of bought Quacky. This probably isn't too far after that. And we meet a guy called Amado, which I think was mentioned earlier on in the series. I'm not 100% sure. I, I believe he was the missing Kara member when we first saw Kara all those months ago now but he's the one who seems to have been doing all these scientific things to all of these vessels children that Jigen has been taking in over god knows how long and experimenting on them presumably doing whatever he's going to be doing to Kawaki I think Jigen's given the orders and Amado is the one who's kind of doing the dirty work so we got to meet him which is another Kara member which is always good to see and this lair this whole vibe that we get from it it's very Orochimaru-esque everybody is saying the same things but it's true extremely Orochimaru like and in my opinion anyway just because I think Jigen is creepy as hell but a good creepy like it's not creepy to the point where I'm like yeah not I'm not feeling this he is like Orochimaru times two. I don't know if it's just me, but I find Jigen so creepy. And that just builds on top of these Orochimaru vibes and just makes him so, so much better. I cannot wait to see what it is Jigen's been doing all, over all this time. I have a little theory that I'm going to record in the next couple of days to come up with that. But basically, am I disappointed? I wouldn't say disappointed. I was kind of hoping we'd see some of Kara, which yes, we did. But I was hoping we'd see Kara in the present day now that Kashin Koji and Delta would have gone back to Jigen because something tells me something very, very saucy is going to happen when that happens because we know Kashin Koji isn't overly happy with Jigen because Kashin Koji's realised that Jigen has not filled them in on the full story and they're missing intel and Kashin Koji wants to find out so I cannot wait to see that I presume that'll probably be in the next chapter I think probably the cliffhanger for next chapter if I'm honest but I'm not too sure but anyway going into G again one thing this chapter really highlighted was I mean, we only literally got a couple pages of G again and Kara in general but it's really starting to show how manipulative Jigen really is and now everything Jigen says I'm starting to question so it's clearly so obvious how manipulative he's been to Kawaki you know saying I'll be your new father come with me I promise you won't be lonely anymore I'll fill that hole of loneliness inside of you blah 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 once me and you become true father and son, I'll give you this gift, which I will be getting onto very, very soon because I'm excited to talk about that. But he's obviously been very manipulative, trying to uh, trying to bring Kawaki into this false sense of security so that he goes along with Jigen's master plan. And seeing Jigen being so manipula manipulative there, it's kind of made me think back to some other instances with uh, with Jigen. I just touched on the whole Kashin Koji scenario. I wonder whether he manipulated Kashin Koji to have something to do with Kara or to go on to this mission because we know clearly Jigen uh, uh, trusted Kashin Koji enough to take on this mission and Kashin Koji took on this mission, blah, blah. And then once he got to saw the meat of the mission, he realized, no, something's not right here. He's been hiding something from us. So... 
I don't know whether or not it could be classified as manipulative, but I think I'm hoping I'm coming across it's kind of along those lines. And then another one which I really have no idea if this was manipulating or not, but when the, he was talking to Delta at that dinner table and he called her like beautiful or whatnot, whether that was manipulating her in any way to try and get onto her good side so that in return she can do all these dirt deeds for him, whatever it is, blah, 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 so that she'll be on her side. And one good thing about Jigen is, and it's one good sign of a good manipulator, manip manipulator is, as you've just found out, he's so manipulative that I don't even know if he's being manipulative or not. I genuinely have no idea. So it's extremely, extremely interesting to me to see Jigen's character. He's very, very, I was going to say slowly, but he's not even slowly becoming one of my favourite characters. He's very, very quickly shooting straight to the top to becoming one of my favourite characters in the entire manga so far. Now then, one of the key things I think any chapter, any form of storytelling should do, and it's one of the things it should aim to do in each chapter, especially in manga, which to be fair, this is something Boruto has been fantastic at, is in each chapter, you, you need to answer some questions, but at the same time, you need to then propose more questions. And that is exactly what we saw in this chapter. And what I mean by this is we got a sort of answer as to where Kawaki got his karma seal from, or at least presumably where he got his karma seal from. So basically, Jigen kneels down in front of Kawaki and says, once we need to become a true parent and son or something along those lines, he says, I will give you an especially valuable gift while taking his left arm. Obviously, that's where he's going to end up having his karma seal in the future. But, so he doesn't necessarily an announce to us all that he's going to give, her the karma, give him the karma seal. However, I think it's 99.9% .9 likely that that's the case. Mainly because the reason I say this is, the word gift is mentioned once throughout the entire chapter. And in that one time, that one instance when he says gift is in that sentence when he kneels down, takes Kawaki's hand and says, I will give you an especially valuable gift. Now, one mention in the entire chapter, yet the entire chapter is named gift. It appears once, mentioned once, and then never touched on again. Yet, it's that large of a plot point that it's deserving to be to be named after an entire chapter. Because this chapter could have been named something about Naruto and Kawaki's relationship, because that's what the, the majority of the chapter was. But no, the gift is mentioned once, brought up once, and it's that massive of a plot device that it constitutes the entire chapter to be named after. That's, that's where I just know that this gift he's on about has to be karma, 1,000 billion percent. So it answers the question, how did he get it, or where did he get it, who did he get it from, blah, blah, blah. But it then gives new questions that spiral off from the previous question of, okay, so we kind of get an idea now of how and who he's got it from, but when's he gonna get it? How exactly is he gonna get it? Is he gonna kill an Otsutsuki? By this point, I don't think he's gonna get it from killing Natsutsuki. Personally, I think Jigen is somehow gonna pass this power down to him. How? I have no idea because we don't know what race Jigen is. Part of me thinks he's an alien species. Part of me thinks he's just some messed up human. I honestly have no idea. The route I can more so see them taking with this is him kind of giving him a, a genetically engineered karma, something along those lines, because we know Kawaki's body is far from natural. It's got cell mutations, it's got scientific ninja tech inside of it. He's he's far beyond being a normal human at this point. So the karma seal being an unnatural karma seal, I wouldn't put it past the writers. But anyway, enough about Kawaki and Jigen. I've been able to talk about Jigen far too much so far in this review, considering how little he actually appeared. So now we're gonna go, go on to the next point. So, Naruto and Kawaki. This chapter is where their relationship fully kicks into action. Now, Naruto actually recognizes himself 
a little bit in Kawaki. And what I mean, what I mean by that is that he he recognizes that he's been singled out as this thing, not a human, just as a thing, a weapon, a demon, something like this, because of this seal he has in his hand. And now Naruto looks at that and thinks, I went through the exact same being a Jinchuriki. Now, personally, I see more of Sasuke in Kawaki. You know, he's a vessel. He's got no family. His family, he's had a terrible childhood, essentially. I understand Naruto's childhood was far from beautiful. But personally, I see more of Sasuke in Kawaki. However, Naruto did make me realize that, you know what? He's like a combo of the two. He's got, he's he's been shunned out of society like Naruto was, but he's got the tragic upbringing that Sasuke also experienced. But anyway, like I said, Naruto sees him almost like a Jinchuriki almost, and he explains to the Kage, because some of the Kage are saying, listen, he's an extremely powerful kid, we don't know what he's capable of, he should be locked up or something for now and kept an eye on, and Naruto saying, straight up, he says, no, I, 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 I am a Jinchuriki, and then Gara steps up and says, I am a Jinchuriki, or I was, because I don't think he is anymore, but something tells me he said, I am a Jinchuriki, or as a Jinchuriki myself, don't know what's going on there, but Naruto and Garo both admit, and I think Darui even steps up and says, I may not be a Jinchuriki myself, but I've spent plenty of time around one, so I do understand to some degree, and Naruto decides to adopt Kawaki, which... I don't know if this is just me because when this happened, I saw everyone on Twitter saying, yeah, obviously I saw it coming from a mile off. And maybe it's just me, but I did not see it coming one bit. Like I said, maybe this was just me being an idiot. Likely is, it's that that is the answer to most things a lot of the time. But I just want to say, because I know a lot of people that I've seen, well, not a lot, but a, a couple of people I've seen saying, yeah, it was obvious he was going to be taken in by Naruto and adopted and live with the Uzumakis. Some of the people that I've seen have said that since the chapter released. I've never seen mention that one bit, so I don't know. But let me, did you see Naruto adopting? I, I saw him going to be with Naruto, but I didn't think Naruto would fully adopt him. And the way I know he's fully adopted him is because when he's talking to Kawaki about Hinata, he refers to Hinata as mother. You know, Hinata is now Kawaki's mother. So, fully adopted. He is Boruto's stepbrother. That takes Naruto and Sasuke's relationship to a whole new level. Because we know Naruto kept saying, Sasuke, you're like a brother to me. You're like a brother to me. Like. With Naruto, with Boruto and Kawaki, however, now, they're not brothers by blood, but we can now call them Brothers, they're step brothers. It's taken Naruto and Sasuke's relationship and just bang, escalated it to the next level. When Naruto and Kawaki are actually sat at the dinner table having like a cup of tea or whatever, we see this scene, which I personally thoroughly enjoy it and I cannot wait to see this scene animated. Kawaki is sat at the table and in his head, he's analyzing everything that's going on while trying to escape. I, I think it's great. It shows that Kawaki has battle smarts, which is huge, huge. He's clearly learned this from somewhere, so I can't wait to see his backstory in relationship with Kawaki, uh, between Kawaki and Jigen, because I do think for a bit of time, they would have had a positive relationship, in my opinion, I don't know. But he sat there and he's analyzing. He said, there's one there, Hinata, another one here, Naruto. There's three exits around me, and there's another one. Small footsteps beyond that door. How he could hear Himawari, or locate Himawari. Crazy, she was on the other side of the door. She was actually peeking through the keyhole. I thought it was quite funny, but quite cute. But it just shows that he had battle smarts. He's aware of all of his surroundings. And then he grabs the table, flips the table up, goes to run for it, and the Naruto just, bang, goes straight into KCM mode. And, wow. He looks so bad ass. If I was Hinata, right there, but I'm no. You know what? Not even gonna get into it. Not even gonna get into it because that that's that's way too weird, way too weird. But while he's trying to escape, he bet he breaks this vase, and then Boruto comes back, and he sees the broken vase. He's saying, "What happened here? What's going on? What have you done, Kawaki?" 
and we learn that this was a vase that Himawari made to give to Hinata on her birthday and that really made me sad I generally felt sad at that point I was really really gutted for Himawari because I think she literally needs to be protected no matter what happens she needs to be safe and sound but Boruto is saying this to Kawaki and Boruto expresses his I don't know what the right, right word is, but his caring attitude. And I think kind of hits Kawaki because I feel as though Kawaki build, builds up everyone to just be these evil demons who are just going to look down on him and are just terrible people. And I think inside him, part of him was like, he's actually an okay guy, you know, he cares. But Kawaki being Kawaki, he didn't want to fully admit that, but he does say, he does say my bad. So in my opinion, that shows that he does feel bad just doesn't want to show it, he doesn't want to break his character. But anyway, the majority of his chapter, like I said, it gave us a bit of an insight into Quacky's backstory a little bit at the start, but for the most part, it started up the bad blood and the relationship between the two Karma Seal stepbrothers, Kawaki and Boruto, and gave us an insight into Naruto and Kawaki's relationship in the first time they met. Guys, what did you think of the chapter? I thought it was a good chapter. It was a good chapter wasn't the best chapter in my opinion it was nothing phenomenal it was nothing incredible and outstanding but it was a it was a very good chapter a very solid chapter i enjoyed it thoroughly my favorite chapter still is probably probably chapter 23 i think or 24 i can't off the top of my head i can't say but it was a very very good chapter just not the best one yet and uh i can't wait to see where it goes i really can't wait i just want to see more kara and more everything more, more answers and more questions. That are, that's what I thrive on. But guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, maybe make sure to smash the like button. Subscribe if you're not already to become a member of the Senpai Squad. The subscriber count has, has exploded lately. We're nearly like 1.7k, which is mental. I swear, like the start of this month, I was on like 1.5k. What's going on, guys? Thank you so much. You, you are literally incredible. But yeah, I'll see you guys in another video. But until then, peace. It was all a dream. Every Saturday, rapper back, Mr. Magic, all in